areas where people are living to age 100 at rates up to 10 times greater than we are, areas where the life expectancy is an extra dozen years, and the rate of middle age mortality is a fraction of what it is in this country. We found our first blue zone about 125 miles off the coast of Italy on the island of Sardinia. And not the entire island, the island's about 1.4 million people, but only up in the highlands, an area called the Noral province. And here we have this area where men live the longest, about 10 times more centenarians than we have here in America. And this is a place where people not only reach age 100, they do so with extraordinary vigor. The secret to a blue zone, the blue zone secret, uh, I think, is staying active. Of course, uh, wonderful food, fresh fu fruits and vegetables, uh, the way of life here, the, the sunshine, all these are factors that come into play. But I think what makes this really special is this, the idea that um, an elderly person can still do. He can still live, he can still work, and they have a wonderful family support system that keeps us alive. Um, in Sardinia, traditionally, somebody, a child, if they didn't marry, they would stay and live with the parents until they passed away. And, uh, and, and a lot of these older villages here, the Blue Zone areas, this still continues. So what better to, than to grow old in your, in your own home, surrounded by people who love you? The most important Sardinian product is the cheese, the sheep milk cheese, above all the, sheep, the raw milk sheep cheese. Sometimes uh, when we are lucky it's still made by shepherds and in that case it's not an industrial uh, product but uh, an handcraft uh, one and uh, it's very good for health and also for the to uh, save the um, tradition that uh, now is uh, little by little is uh, disappearing. In my opinion, the most important uh, product is the sheep milk cheese made here with the Sardinian milk. Yeah. And do you have a favorite cheese out of all the ones you produce? Well, no, it depends on the. Um, each one is very interesting. It, it depends on the, the shepherd, on the region, on the decision, because the, the milk changes when the grass changes, the, 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 the flowers change. And each one is very interesting. Here in places like Seulo, Dorgali, you can easily find someone who's 95, still drives a car, goes to the vineyard every day, and unfortunately, in other places, the, the elderly are placed away in homes. And once your body is, is immobile, your, your brain follows. Um, have I seen the island? The region where I live change. But yeah, unfortunately, I think I have seen it change, not in the way that I would like to see it, in the sense that because of the um, problems in decreasing population, um, increasing modernization, and the things are changing slowly. It seems as though the communities are in risk of falling apart. For now, the, the older generation, the generation that were born in the 30s, the 40s, the 20s are still there, but they're unfortunately dying, and it's not sure whether the newer generations, those that were born in the 50s and 60s, will be interested in continuing doing things as they have always been done here. <laughs> 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 
people might not be interested in continuing the traditions. I think uh, modernization is, uh, um, or the comforts of modern life are quite enchanting and people, as a, through television, etc., word of mouth, they, they think that life could be easier in another way. People are looking for other things today, they're not interested anymore in um, work in the land or putting all the work the beautiful and hard work that is needed um, they're, they're not as interested as they as they should be in my opinion um, yeah so that's reflecting in the population decreasing and when the next generation comes we're gonna see that yeah exactly yes Do they still speak the the language? You know, are they still carrying on the traditions of their forefathers? Are arts and crafts, precious arts and crafts, valuable arts and crafts, are they dying out? Uh, you know, all these are important questions that Sardinia needs to ask himself, and I think, on a governmental level, they are. And uh, there are those who believe that um, rediscovering these traditions, keeping these things alive. Uh, could be the key to finding sustainability here in the island. Today the regional government is actually trying to um, uh, bring uh, I guess the old traditions and the, this blue zone way of life to those who come from outside and they see in that a, a key and a, a way to keep it alive for the future and I, I think it's something really special that the, the island has to offer.
I know a fella, he bought a boat and I was like, oh, that's awesome. You know, go on the boat on the river. And the son goes, well, I don't have time. So he's working really, really hard because he has quite a few debts and because he's bought into it, you know what I mean? But he doesn't really have time to enjoy the things that he's bought. So why get it? I mean, why buy it if you don't have time to enjoy it? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's a little bit odd, you know, and for us it's kind of like, well, why, should, why would you do that, you know? But we're, we're, our, our mindset, generally speaking, not everybody, but generally speaking, is living within your means and not going overboard. But we're very moderate in our way of thinking, whether it's um, good, bad habits, good habits, everything. We're very, our, our thing is moderation, okay? You, how many people did you see drunk? Locals at the Bunny Yidi. I mean locals, you yeah. forget the other ones, but the locals I mean. I yeah, so you can have a thousand locals together at a party. Maybe one or two will be over the top because that's considered, uh, how do you say it? Drinking is not about getting drunk here. When you get drunk, it means you don't know where your limit is. It's supposed to enhance, to get you in the right cafe, the right mood, and to make it more enjoyable, but not to go over that line. Funny these go way. I have not. I haven't. I haven't been able to find out exactly how far back they go, but that was a way of social community support for the village and a way of bringing people together from all the villages. Each village has its own paniri because it's a festival that. So every village, well not Nas, but generally speaking, every village has at least one church. Some villages have a lot of churches, and so the festival is on the saint's name day. So if your village is St. Peter, you would do your festival on his name day. This is because it's a traditional um, vegetable dish, so as you can see, there's gorgeous veggies here. So there is a story behind the soup pot, and if, I, if I'm wrong, just butt in and, and just correct me. But I think the story goes back in the day when um, the men would be out for working and doing what they were doing, and they'd come home for dinner and they'd say to that like, you know, what's, what are we eating today? She would quickly go out and get her beaters out of the garden and make baked beaters in the, in, the, in the oven and say to him, swap soup. How does it work though? Soup it up. In Greek we say swap it up, and I hear in Dalek we say soup it up. So, uh, so up. Which and means so I left you some. Uh. So she said, yep, I have left you some, so up. And that sort of stuck, and that dish became known as sufigog, which is the traditional Italian dish, and it is basically vegetables in, in the oven, which tastes amazing, actually amazing. Guys, okay, listen to me. Let's 
Alright, <laughs> it's going to become the oven just with olive oil basically. And just a little um, bit of trivia if anyone wants to know. Anyway, um, the nutrients in um, vegetables are fat soluble. So when you put in olive oil and you're cooking in olive oil, that olive oil helps the nutrients heighten. So you're actually getting a lot more benefit from cooking all your veggies in olive oil. So don't be scared of olive oil, and those of you who cook with olive oil that already know that. Do not be scared, put in heaps. I think it's any one thing, I think it's a combination. I think Dan summed it up very well in his book, The Power Nine. I think it's a combination of different things. I think a lot of things that make a big difference here too is we have stress, but we don't have the same kind of stress that you do in the city. We don't have trying to keep up with the Joneses attitude. It doesn't matter if you have a big house, a small house, if you have a lot of money, if you don't have a lot of money, we don't have that distinction between the classes. So that takes a lot of pressure off of people, I think, right away. It's full of wax, uh, honey on the inside and wax on the outside. So they start. Okay, so what happens is that the frames go through the runway, he checks the frames as they come along to make sure that the wax is completely off. product that most families had, okay? Και yeah. σχεδόν τότε, α πούμε, το κάθε σπίτι, αν δεν είχε πολλέ κυψέλε, είχε 5-6 για το μέλι του, ξέρω. Uh -huh. Και τότε, α πούμε, το εμπόριο γινόταν ανταλλακτικά. Σου πει ένα μέλι μου, δεν είναι σαν λέω. Πολλέ οικογένειε είχαν το ίδιο χάνι, 
It's not 100% sure, could be the climate, but he said, you know, you've got pine honey here, pine honey in Samos, but they're completely different. What, what's the, what's pine honey mean? Pine, from the pine tree, sorry. No, but, well, I would, um, Thea said, if you gave enough to ask the question, find yes. out why, what is pine honey really, what's it made, like, what is it? Ikaria has always been an isolated island. So we had the pirates, we were under the Turkish oppression, and so people live very frugally. It was about survival, basically. Do you think um, that's unique to this island? That, um, that's a good question. I really don't know. But even the young people have this way of thinking. But if it's unique to Ikaria, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I can only tell you about Ikaria. I don't know about yeah. other parts of Greece. <laughs> You know, Ikaria is kind of different. Ikaria, you have such a strong identity here. If you ask somebody where they're from, they'll say Ikaria before they'll say they're Greek. Do you know what I mean? And, but Ikarians are just very, very connected to their island. That's so the best way I can describe yeah. it. We, you know, even Ikarians who live outside. So we had an Ikarian convention in the States. We have it every year, and every year it's a different city. Um, I believe it's over 2,000 people that go there for the weekend, Ikarians. All living in the States. All living in the States and Canada, yep. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you guys talk about, though? What do we talk about? Yeah. We party, we dance, all the young oh, people get together, the old people get together, you see people you haven't seen for the whole year. You have, like, huge family reunions because everyone's coming. It's like a huge panagiri that lasts three days, for example. <laughs> they have talks, they talk about problems, they give money for scholarships for kids there, they help people here. Um, they do a lot of things for the Icarians here, for the communities here. They raise money for different things. They do fundraisers. They're very involved with the island. They're very connected, very, very connected. Yeah, so that's amazing that people who um, have moved away still keep that sense mm -hmm. of community mm -hmm. and do active things. It's changing because alive. people are more spread out now than they used to be, but it's nice that they still come together and we still have Icarian clubs all around the states. Yeah, so people never lose that. You don't really lose your identity. Your carrying identity, I think it's something, I think it's something in the blood, <laughs> you know? We don't have that climbing up the social ladder. We don't. We don't have that concept at all. Uh, if you're, if you have a lot of money, and if you don't have a lot of money, your lifestyle is the same. Yeah. The thing is, we don't have. We, we were talking about labeling, and we don't have that. You're judged here by your character and who you are as a person. And oftentimes, if you have a high position, more is expected of you. I don't know what's going to happen regarding longevity in the next 40 years. I have no idea if people are going to continue living so long or not. Um, lifestyles have changed, foods change, everything's changed. A lot of things are the same, but a lot of things are different, okay? In so far as the young people, yes, people seem to have, seem to have, people definitely have less children nowadays than they used to, but what's cool about Ikaria is and even Greeks have told me that Ikaria is different in the sense that we're a small island, but we have a large population of young people. And we have a lot of young people who, if they can, choose to make their homes here and their futures here. They'll leave and then they'll come back. Some leave and don't come back. Maybe they'll come back when they retire, they come back for holidays, this kind of thing. But we have a large population of young people living and raising families in Ikaria. <laughs> 
Um, and my final question was either what's the secret or what can is like one physical thing we can take away and put into our lives to kind of not so we live until a hundred but just so we live like more fulfilled yeah okay so put the materialistic stuff aside okay um, what I see when I talk to people, I, I do my own retreats, but, but they're very small. But what I see when I talk to people is there's so much loneliness, you know. There's so much lack of social connection. Or if you say, if, you're, if you can't sleep because you're really, really depressed in the middle of the night, do you have someone you can call that'll say, okay, it's 2 in the morning, it's okay. Tell me, you know what, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you have a support net behind you? Um, I see a lot of this. And for older people, we don't have age discrimination here. Age is not so important to us. And people will say, how old, how old is this person? I say, I'm not sure, you know, probably maybe 80, 90. I don't know how old they are. You don't know, how, but we don't really pay much mind to age as a number. It's more like saying, what you, usually if you ask me how old they are, they'll tell you what year they were born. Oh, so you went to school with so-and-so, for example. But it's not saying, oh, you're old. We don't have that. So we, this, I think, makes a big difference, too, because I've talked to young people who worry about turning 40. They think they need to have their career, their lives completely set, because afterwards they're not marketable anymore, and that's really, really sad. Or you talk to a 30-year-old who does Botox or that other thing that I can't remember what it's called as a preventive medicine. Seriously? Anyway, but I think, I think a lot of it is the social. It's very, very hard here to be isolated. You have to really try, and even the most miserable person is going to be invited to a family get together, to a holiday thing, to something like this. They're going to they're going to be included. Everyone's included. No one's left out. So for me, it's the social connections. Somebody drives by, you talk for a minute, so you have you have that connection. You say good morning to people, and sense of purpose because the older people don't really lose their purpose, their sense of purpose. They're still included. My uncle comes and plays tally with my son, for example. You know what I mean? Things like this. Um, you know, those two things I see. Every time I'm in the States, something strikes me. Last year it was the labeling. You know, like, where do you fit? You have to fit into a certain box kind of a thing, which was really interesting because I never thought of it like that. And here we don't have that. You know, you're it's about individualism and your personality, you, who you are, what you are as a person. It's not putting you in a square. Social, sense of purpose for the older people I think is very, very important.
Gente, tem que please and Weird stuff, weird stuff. Um, I'm glad you're editing. <laughs>